Hey there guys, how are you doing? It's Alan at AM Details here and this is a live how-to session where I am going to talk you guys through the AM Details five step safe wash technique. You can check it out guys, straight after this. Hey there guys, I'm Alan at AM Details where we do car care and detailing related content every week. Do subscribe and remember to smash that bell so you get a notification every time we go live just like this to answer your questions. I hope you're all well. It's great to see you all in the chat. Thank you so much. Check this out. It's a new feature of our live feeds so you can see all the comments and all the good stuff going in the chat. I have the water, I have the coffee, and I'm going to dive pretty much straight in to it on this one, guys, with, <clears throat> excuse me, dive straight into it with the live stream on the how to session. So I'm going to take you guys through. The AM Details five step safe wash technique. We get asked it quite a lot. How do we wash cars here? Why do we wash them in that way? So I'm just gonna dive straight in. If you have a vehicle guys, and I'm going to assume, remember this is how it's done at AM Details, this is how we do it. You might have other things at home and that's what the Q&A session at the end will be for. So I can hopefully help you out with all your tips. But here at AM Details, step number one, we pressure wash down the vehicle first. We're not gonna try putting snow foam on when a vehicle's dry, we're going to pressure wash it down. The reason for that is we want to use that nice flow, that nice stream of water to get rid of as much of the loose debris as we can. We want to get as much off as possible. That loose stuff that's on there, what's the point in using a chemical to get rid of it when we can just use water to get rid of the loose stuff initially? So that's what we're going to do first, guys. And then once we've done that, sorry, I really, I thought we had lost the, uh, I thought we had lost the live stream then. Sorry, <laughs> the internet connection here is a bit funky. So what we do is pressure wash down the car. We want to try and get rid of as much of the loose dirt and grime as we can. Paying attention to all the shuts, paying attention to all the grills, paying attention to everything. Let's get that loose stuff off first that we can use water. So we generally start top down, bottom up, doesn't really matter. Just give it a really good thorough rinse and down guys. Step number two. It's the first time we're going to induce a chemical and here at AM Details we use AMAPC or you guys could use at home a citrus cleaner and there is a reason that we use this one first. Generally, he says, generally you can't leave an APC or a citrus cleaner on as long as snow foam and I personally believe that APCs cut more than snow foam if you're doing the cut per time ratio. So we do APC first. That means that we can go around the whole car, spray an APC on the whole vehicle here at AM Details, but you guys at home might just want to focus on them high impact areas. So just imagine bugs in the summertime. So you've got your front bumpers, you've got your wing mirrors, you've got that areas on the lower. So you remember your old cars, they used to have that bumper strip down the side of the car. So then you're wanting to get your APC onto there and let it into eat into the car. And we go the whole way around the car. So start maybe at the rear, spray the whole car. Once you're back at the rear, pressure wash the product off. And that way we have now done a normal rinse. We've then done an APC rinse, which had a nice bit of cut. So it started to eat into the dirt and grime that's on your car. We've now pressure washed that off. What is left on the car? It's some pretty stubborn stuff that a normal pressure wash and a good APC citrus cleaner couldn't remove. So now, when we put snow foam on the vehicle that is designed to be left on there for a longer period of time, it's only really got some super tough stuff to work on. So snow foam can be left on there and it can now work on that, rather than using it previously when you put snow foam on and it just quickly started to work into stuff that would very easily be washed off with pressure washer or probably a good rain session. Leave the snow foam on. This is a what order do we do things in video, but I am going to go into a little bit on why we rinse off from the bottom up when snow foaming. The reason for that is, for me, snow foam is softening up that dirt. It's not drawing up into itself and then going to be able to just rinsing it off, the snow foam will take all that dirt away. What it's going to do is it's going to sit on the surface of the paint, eating into that dirt, but what's physically going to clean it is the pressure washer, pressure going through the foam, through the dirt, hitting the paint, pulling it all off and then taking it off the vehicle. So the pressure washer is doing the cleaning, not the snow foam. So I use the snow foam as an indicator of where the pressure washer has been. And that's why we rinse from the bottom up. Some people say you're washing the car twice. 
Some people say you're trying to defy gravity. At the start of this, I did say, guys, we're getting paid to wash the car. We take each step we can to safely wash the car. So, step number one was pressure wash it down. Step number two, APC rinse. Step number three, snow foam rinse. So now we've got rid of the loose stuff. We've originally cut through. Then we've left the snow foam on there to tackle all that stuff that these two couldn't. And we've been able to leave it on there for a longer period of time. And then we've done a very focused pressure wash session. So nine times out of 10, most people are happy with the cleanliness of the car. It is time for step number four. The two bucket method. It's now time to make contact with the vehicle. We've done a pretty good pressure wash session, a very good cleaning session, and now is the time. Two bucket guys is very, very simple. You're just gonna have your normal bucket that had the shampoo in it, then you have another bucket which has your rinse water in it. And you're gonna work with your open pore sponge or you're gonna use your wash mitt or whatever it is you guys like to use at home. And you're gonna go from the shampoo to the car and rinse the car down, or wash the car down. Then take your dirty mitt into the rinse water. Rinse all that dirt out into there, massively reducing how much dirt you're gonna put back on the car. Then you have a clean mitt into the clean soapy water and back onto the car. And you just repeat that cycle and then rinse. And that was step number four. Step number five. The final piece of washing down the car. And it isn't totally essential every single time. It's why I've left it as number five. Because some people doing their maintenance wash might be quite happy with how that is. But for me, step number five is then using AMAPC and a one inch detailing brush to go around all the intricate areas that the wash mitt won't really be able to reach. So for example, in and around your mirrors, in and around your badges, the front grills, so if you've got like Focus grills or Ford grills, you might have to use actually a wheel brush or something and get in around the honeycomb sort of grill. The door shut area in all the intricate areas. So we do that as step five because you don't need to do it all the time. You might wash the car down and be quite happy with the standard of the car and then only really want to clean the grills up perfectly every single, uh, like once a, once a week or once every two weeks or something along them lines. So you might not be wanting to go so intense every time. So that is why we leave the intricate areas to step number five. And that's it. It's as easy as that. When people ask me what order should I do stuff in, when do I snow foam, when do I do whatever, just go back to this video and choose the AM Details 5 step safe wash technique. Once you've done all that guys, you can then move on to your next purpose. So we do that anyway at the start of every service. If you were then going to decontaminate your vehicle, you move on to that step. If you were going to then do a maintenance valet, you can bring it inside, dry your car, do a quick detailer dry, do a blow dry, or Go out for a drive and let the car dry itself or use a product like Pure Final Rinse. Just pop it onto your hose, rinse that vehicle down and then just leave it and you'll have purified water on there that'll dry out without leaving any water spots. And that is it guys. That is our safe wash technique for maintenance. Job done. Let's go and have a look in the questions because there hasn't been a lot going on in the questions. I'm not entirely sure if the... Um, the chat section has maybe stopped with my internet. Oh no, it's starting to flow through now. Here we go, I can hear you. Here we go. Oh, this is excellent. Sorry, I'm getting a bit of a delay here, so I'm not picking up. Patrick Simpson has just asked, what about the iron remover? Yeah, this is the five step safe wash, guys. So this is all about how we wash, how we do a maintenance wash, or the wash that we do before we go on to the next step that might be decontamination, or drying the car, or whatever it is you're going on to move on to next. This is how we do the step five step safe wash. And it's how we do it to try and reduce as much of the marring or damage that you could be putting into when you're making contact with your vehicle. We want to massively reduce that so you get it as clean as possible before that happens. How did you find that AM Detail safe wash technique? It is as easy as that. I'm gonna pull up the chat now, have a little look, interact with you guys, see where we're at on the live stream because I'm trying to work out how much delay there is. There we go, cool, I know where we're at now. Excellent, so we've got the chat section. I'm gonna jump in here and say hi to you all. Let's have a look. So we've got Miles Drive, how you doing? Uh, Macaroconi. Ma <laughs> uh, hi, how you doing? Richie, Tori, Andrew, it's great to see you all. Billy, Patrick, Billy. Uh, what about iron remover? Yeah, Patrick, for iron remover, that is definitely part of the decontamination process. I, for some reason, I'm seeing a lot of people online rinse the car down, and then they're going straight to an iron fallout remover. Everyone has their way of doing things 
and they'll have a reason for it. And as I want to say in this video, this is not me saying this is the industry standard way, it is the AM details way, and it's why, why we do things here. But I want to explain a little bit about iron removers uh, very vaguely, I don't want to smash into it too much in this, but predominantly, depending on the chemical used inside an iron remover, to remove iron, you create a small acidic reaction, even if the company are saying on the bottle it is pH neutral. Because yes, in the bottle it's a pH neutral product. But once you spray it onto your car, it is an acidic reaction that's happened anytime it meets phosphorus. It's one of the stages that's gonna happen during that. So you imagine you've got a dirty car. Just putting this out there, a dirty car. You pressure wash it down, excellent. What is still on the car? Well, using the AM Details 5 step wash technique, you know there's still gonna be dirt on there because we haven't done an APC cut. There's still gonna be grime and other sort of bits in there because we haven't even done foaming or the two bucket method. Plus, there's gonna be brake dust on your bodywork. There's gonna be any fallout that might have come from anywhere. This is all already on your vehicle. If you go and spray an iron remover on there, it's gonna react with all them deposits of iron, but also all the loose brake dust that's up the side of your vehicle. It's gonna react with everything. You're just throwing it over the whole car, the plastics, the windows, everything. That is a big reaction to happen very early in the stages of washing. And for me, that is not a safe way of washing a car. So that is why we do the AM Details five step wash technique before we even bring in such a chemical as an iron fallout remover. So I hope that helps you, Patrick. It's a decontamination product designed for removing metal. It is not a dedicated wheel cleaner. We would always clean the wheels before then using an iron fallout remover. And it is definitely not something I would use in my pre-wash stages. Billy Fraser, he's along with you now on the next episode. Oh, cool. Uh, Umar is asking, my car is protected with G-Technic C1 and XO. Great combination. Would using APC citrus pre-wash using my weekly wash hinder remove the ceramic coating? Many thanks. No, Umar, it will not remove your ceramic coating at all. It's a perfectly safe product. Yes, over time you could argue that all products, even pH neutral products, slightly degrade um, your natural coatings and your natural sealants, but XO is a super solid one. And G-Technic C1, no, it definitely wouldn't. So if you've got C1 and then you've stacked it with XO, so you've got XO on top. XO is like the long life wax element of G-Technic. So eventually it will start to degrade, but only the living element, the beating up element, XO will still be there as it is still a slight uh, ceramic in the spectrum, guys. So do remember that. It is not gonna hinder it in any way at all. And then even the microscopic amounts that it may over a good four weeks of washing, etc., would easily be topped up with a simple detail and spray maintenance wash or using something like C2 version three. So don't be wondered, uh, worried at all in doing that, Umar. Let me take a quick drink, guys. I kind of went straight from the little tutorial into this. I had a feeling doing a how-to or tutorial style uh, chat session, the questions would get quite large and quite intense. So bear with me. How are y'all doing in the chat? This is incredible. Look, so cool. Been able to see you all in here. It is fantastic seeing you here. And just an update, if you've just dived onto this live session, guys, this is a live how-to session brought to me, brought to you from me, Alan of AM Details, where we're bringing you detailing and car care related videos every week. Please do remember to subscribe so that you get a notification every time we go live, just like this, and answering your questions. And in this week's, we're doing the AM Details five-step safe wash technique. And it's the techniques that I use as a pre-wash, as a maintenance wash, or as the steps I do for washing before we then go into decontamination, which then may lead into protection or may lead into machine polishing. It's the technique you see in every single one of our videos. I'm gonna dive into these chat sessions now. Let's see who's at the top. And I will try and start from them. So we've got, I uh, just need to blow this up. Really, really sorry. Quickly blow it up. There we go, and then click on this. So we've got L saying, hello, hello, how are you? It's nice to say hello. I'm LK. Mark, I leave APC on as long as I can without it drying up. The one inch detailing brush part he was talking about, I do that while the APC is dwelling, then rinse off. Great wash technique. You know, that's what I'm saying. Everyone can have their own wash technique and at what stages they bring it in. The only reason I leave it as step five is sometimes it's not needed for the home user on every maintenance and we've got to make this tutorial for, uh, as I said, pre doing a protection or for a customer that we might have here who wants to do their own maintenance. But also um, we get paid to clean cars here. So we do it as a separate individual stage. And um, then you can choose whether you're gonna do it or not. That's the only reason I have it is step number five. Uh, here we go. Smith 
Automotive, hello, how you doing my good man? Hi Alan, hope you're well. Five step wash technique is the way to go. Car, oops, much better. Car looks much better for it already, cheers. No worries, thank you very much. Ryan, does AMAPT strip any wax on the paint? No, very minimal. It is a citrus cleaner, and as I just explained a little bit on the live chat, no matter what product you're using, even if you're using a tar remover, people always think, oh, I've just used a tar remover, that's it, my, my protection is dead. Anything that's gonna erode even a little bit of protection, you can top up really easily, guys, using a quick detailer, or you can just reapply your wax, etc. on top of that and keep it up going. Billy Fraser, uh, waste of product. Oh, what's that in relation to, Billy? Give us a shout, Billy. Let us know what the waste of product comment is about, and then I'll try my best to answer it for you. Uh, hi, any advice on washing your alloy wheels? Of course, Jason, I can give you advice on that. In fact, my first bit of advice would be to do your alloy wheels first. There we go. <laughs> we do the alloy wheels first here, guys, for a couple of reasons. So the first one, alloy wheels, engine bays, mm, really bad door shuts. You want to tackle them first. This is me answering one bit, and then I'm going another bit because generally they're dirtier. So then if you want to be completely perfect in the scientific world, you want to wash them down first because they're going to be putting some quite nasty things onto your paintwork. You know, you could potentially be putting engine oil on your paintwork, potentially putting brake dust onto your paintwork. So you want to clean these up first. But the reason we clean them up first here is because you can focus on the wheel. A day like today where it's actually been a really nice day for cleaning cars, it's been relatively warm and there's a danger of products drying out. So what you don't want to be doing is thinking, I'll wash all my bodywork down, get it all done, and then if you're not using a filter like a pure Fresnel rinse filter or anything like that, then you might then rinse your car down all done, leaving chemicals on there, some rinse water, and then start going to your dedicated wheels. The whole time that water's been allowed to dry out, the whole time you're then spraying water on the arches, it just doesn't work out very well. So I prefer to do wheels first, that way you can clean them, decontaminate them, Focus on them. You know, what if you've got some stubborn staining on there? You might have to do a couple of hits of iron. You may need to break out an acid wheel cleaner. You may need to break out lots of different chemicals just to get the wheels clean because they're quite a grubby area. They get a lot of impact to your arches, that area. So we tackle that first. You focus on that one wheel or you can sometimes juggle the front and rear at the same time between your putting a chemical on, letting it work, clean the front wheel. Once you've finished cleaning the front wheel, put your next chemical on, go to the rear wheel. So you can play around with that if you wish. Um, and that's why I do the wheels first. And then I move on to the move on to the bodywork. Cool question. Uh, what would you recommend? Do you use grit guards in both buckets? So, Jeremy, do you use grit guards in both your buckets? Indeed, I do, sir. Uh, grit guards are designed to keep grit at the bottom of the bucket. So I want to keep any grit that might get into both of the buckets at the bottom. Uh, a lot of people think they're used for. Uh, if this was the grit guard, putting your mitt on and then rubbing to agitate for the grit to fall through, that's not what they're for. They're designed to keep the grit in the bottom of the bucket. In saying that, grit guard have just brought out like the grit cleaner. So they have now brought out an angled grit guard because some people used to just tape two together. And you can now put your hand on there if you wish and agitate your mitt to clean the mitt up. But the original grit guard is still in the bottom and still doing the job of keeping the grit in the bottom. So that is why we have grit guard in both buckets. Some people even use them in their wheel buckets to keep the grit from the wheels in the lower of there as well. Uh, what else is coming up on here? I'm just trying to have a look. Where are we up to? We're up to... I'm not answering very fast. Quite intense questions. This is what I knew would happen. Uh, okay, so... Da -da 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 -da. Who have we got? Oh, we've got uh, Slava saying hello. Hello, how are you doing? It's great to see you all in the live chat. This is amazing. Jeremy Prosser, why don't you put snow foam on a second time when you are doing the two bucket wash? Why don't I? Why don't you put snow foam on a second time when you're doing the two bucket wash? Um, you could do. Yeah, I can, I can see where you come from. So you would put snow foam on and then use it as a lubricant when you're doing the two bucket wash. Yeah, you could introduce that step. I don't feel there's a great need to because I've done quite an intense rinse, quite an intense APC rinse and quite an intense snow foam rinse. So when I'm doing the two bucket method, I just want to use the chemical that I've got in my bucket at the time. Okay, we're using AM Detail Shampoo, which is a perfectly good product, but you might have some products out there that are shampoos with additives in them, and then you don't want to be mixing them with like a snow foam that's on your car, or you don't want to be mixing them with, you know, mixing them two things together. So it might have an additive in it that won't react very well with the snow foam, etc. So when we're doing each stage, we do each stage individually for that reason. And when I teach the five step method, that's why I teach it like that. So you're doing it each method individually. I know some people are going to say it's very long winded, it's not the most time saved, and that's where you guys at home can take them elements and then adapt them to your wash teak on your home. But imagine I was using a shampoo that maybe had a wax additive or had 
um, something in it or for example say I was using uh, I, I don't know a slightly acidic shampoo for a reason so maybe I'm doing a um, concrete removal or something along them lines and then if I'm then going to use that shampoo but I might have an alkaline based snow foam on the car you're going to be having a chemical reaction that's just going to neutralize the alkalines and the acids and then you're just washing your car down so when I teach people at home to use the five step I've got to try and keep it super simple and keep it easy so that even if you end up using another company's chemicals that may have additives in them or not if you're using our techniques you're still going to be safe always read your labels guys great question though uh, auto save components Elgin Bry TV hello it's great to see you in the chat uh, we're just in the process of organizing a safe wash training night in Edinburgh I've just recorded the video today for it now need to edit it superb Brian that's amazing give me a shout if you want me to come down help out with that I'll happily if we can get it to work in with the diary then I will be there uh, lower up lip is that where we're up to in here oh I need to work faster okay well, I'm gonna work very fast <gasps> Lower up lip, hi Alan, I've just bought a white car with lots of orange spots all over the car, how do I remove it? I've also bought most of the range. Okay, very quickly on the live chat, I'm going to guess that that's iron fallout, so you want to be using AM iron. So go through the five step safe wash technique, then your body work will be nice and safe. Ooh, hey, there we go, there's the camera. Your body work will then be uh, nice and clean and safe, ready for an iron fallout removal. I personally do tar as the next session, generally only because tar sessions are larger and they're easier to remove from the paintwork. So then if you're wiping, uh, if you put an iron on there, for example, and then you're going to start wiping the iron off, you might pick up some clumps of the tar on the microfiber because the microfiber can just grab them. Uh, so I would do a tar session next. So the five step wash technique, tar session, and then go on to do your AM iron session. And that'll help you very quickly just using this chat as a remove that orange remover problem for you. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to scroll to the bottom. So sorry, guys, you guys are smashing the questions and it is incredible. So boom, here we go. Uh, hey, Alan, I use your products for the first time at the weekend and they're incredible. Thank you so much. I really should pre-read these questions before I say them out aloud as well. <laughs> Especially the snow foam and APC. My question is, can you use a fallout remover on top of the g coating? Yes. Guys, remember, coatings are not something to be afraid of. A lot of people ask these questions. You've got your paint work, you know, your primer, your paint, etc. clear coat. Then you're putting a coating on top of the clear coat to make the clear coat tougher, to give it a better pH resistance. So this is like stronger than your clear coat in relation to scratch and chemical resistance, yeah? So you, of course you can use all the chemicals that we would have been using on your clear coat before we put the coating on there. And you're not going to strip it back. You're not going to be removing that, guys. There's a reason there's long life given on these. They're highly durable products. And then even if you do begin to slightly come into that layer, this is where I say it again, don't be afraid to then top it up with like a g C2 wash, AM detailer, or there's no reason you can't have your ceramic coating on there and then top it up with a wax. No need to be doing any glazing or polishing. Just top it up with a wax to give you the water behavior you're looking for. Remembering the last thing you put on your car is how the water will behave. Wow. 20 to 8 already. This is incredible. How are we all doing, guys? Where have we come from? Where are we? Up next. Whoa. SPB Auto Shine. Good evening, Alan. I'm not at a computer this evening, so I can't do a super chat. <laughs> Absolute gentleman. Thank you so much. I am so chuffed that you've tuned in to check out this chat. I hope you liked uh, listening to the AM Details 5 Step Wash. And, guys, if you have just come on live, 53 people watching. It is incredible. I'm Alan and welcome to AM Details where we bring you car care and detailing related content every week. Please do smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get a notification every time I do this and go live to answer your questions. And in this Q&A session, I started by teaching you all the AM Details five step wash technique, why we do it. And now I'm going through your amazing questions right here and you can go back and watch them all because we put the chat in here. I'm answering your questions. Trying to keep them on the subject of wash technique if we can. That would be incredible. Uh, and then we can keep this live chat all on that source. So I'm going to quickly go through now. Smith Automotive, need to get back up for some training. It'd be great to see you. Mike Henderson, Alan, give us the do's and don'ts when washing, protecting something like Expel film. If you can do the five step wash technique on Expel film, brilliant. It's just a film. Don't be afraid of it, guys. Uh, protecting it. Uh, good question. I can The AM Details seal and AM Details wax is perfect on top of Expel. You don't have a problem there. And as far as I'm aware, decontaminating it is as normal. But don't quote me on that. I would go and check out people like, um, 
my friends down at Spotless Detailing, check out Callum, and also check out Clive down at Ultimate Shine Autos. Both G-Technic guys, both doing Expel film, both really knowledgeable, great teams down there. So check them out if you've got any Expel film questions. It's not something I do here and I'm not a specialist in it. I'm LK Allen. I've been looking at your whole G-Technic line. I'm wondering, since most wheels are clear coated from the factory, why not just use CES black system on the wheels instead of wheel armor? Uh, we actually have it as an upgrade option. So if you come in to see us, you can have crystal silver and black put onto the wheels as an upgrade option. Uh, the reason it's not done on every car is all to do with time and budget of the customer, etc. C5 is easier to apply to wheels than CS is. CS is not... We find it easier because we're obviously applying it all day every day and I'd like to say that we are now specialists in applying crystal serum black. But you try to apply that to a multi-spoke wheel, it is not an easy task. Whereas C5 is more forgiving, you can do some things with overwipe, you can do some other things. So in those areas, it's going to require more time to apply crystal serum black. It's going to give the customer better protection. I mean, the pH resistance, you could wash your car with acid. You could uh, wash your wheels with acid wheel cleaner all day long with the pH resistance of CS. But the added money required is sometimes where people are like, you know what, no, I'm, I'm happy with the C5. But we happily put crystal serum black on top of sets of wheels for customers. I've got a Range Rover that has them on. The wheels are phenomenally clean all the time. Really, really good product. Great question. Where are we up to? Do you use the same five-step wash on a coated car? Of course. As I just said, coated cars treat it just the same as a normal car, guys. Don't be afraid of coatings and don't think once you've got coatings on there that you have to be doing anything differently. The five-step safe wash technique will work. It will be perfectly fine. And the reason we brought it in, it's all the name. It is a safe wash technique. I'm okay. I would have thought. Can I use APC only to cover the vehicle interior to, to cover the whole interior valet? Yes, Richie, AMAPC is a great product for cleaning up leather, cleaning up fabric and cleaning up dashes, pedals, your gaps and your door shuts. It is great. It's not a dedicated leather cleaner, but it's a fantastic product. If you just agitate into the lever a little bit and use a microfiber to clean it up. Who else have we got in here? Tony, how are you doing? So he, so he uses two different soaps for his snow foam and two bucket. Indeed I do, Tony, yes. Uh, my snow foam is completely different to my um, soapy shampoo but the reason I teach it in that way the five step if you're using the one product then of course you could you know put the put your soap on with snow foam and then just use your mitt and two bucket method if you wished but I have to teach this as if not knowing what's on your shelf I can't say that you're using nothing but the AM details range so we have to have it that you could be using different products for every step like we do here anyway um, and thus I have to make it safe so that's why I make it a nice easy five step safe wash technique I hope that helps you out Tony uh, lower lip, thank you Alan, thank you. What would you recommend for someone getting started into detailing? From Adam, what would you recommend for someone getting started, getting started with detailing? Enjoy it, that, you all get into it because you enjoy washing your cars. Don't get wrapped up in it. You're, you're all asking some amazing questions, uh, quite intense questions, and then there's a reason I break it down to be the simple five step wash technique. It's super, super simple, logical steps. Just Break everything down simple, enjoy doing it, don't get wrapped up in the, oh, I might do this, oh, I might do that. Take the elements of it that work for you. For example, if you work, uh, if you're at a block of flats, you might not have access to a pressure washer. So how can you do this with just using a hose? Well, you could go to your local uh, B&Q or your local wholesale place and try and get a hose adapter that will give you, you want that fan, you know, that solid fan that's coming out. So you just need a nice fan spectrum. You could carry out all these stages. And then when it came to the snow foam element, um, if you don't have uh, the ability to snow foam, you could do a double APC session. Or you could have a look at the Valley Pro snow foam blaster. There's an option there. You get some other handheld blasters. Or you can actually, I'm fairly sure there's snow foam blasters that work on a hose as well. We don't stock them here at AM Details. Never use them. Can't give my personal opinion on them. Sorry. But, you know, just adapt with what you've got. We have some people as well that can't get access at all and all they can do is go to a car garage so it's like okay how far do you want to go do you want to put a couple of two litre warm bottles in your car and use the pressure washer then do the APC rinse stage and then knowing that you can't do a snow foam rinse the next stage you only can do is go to the two bucket but you've done as much as you could with what you've got and in the two bucket you're using the warm water that was in your boot and then you dry the car down you could do that all at the car garage you know a quick detailer dry down jobs are good 
Up next in the chat, what have we got? Uh, Billy, how you doing? Nice to see you from Glasgow. It's great to have you here on the live chat. Hello, how are we doing? Uh, Ovid you? Oh, I'm so, so sorry. I can barely speak proper English anyway. I can barely pronounce the languages up here. Never mind all you incredible people that tune in from all around the world with your amazing names. I'm so sorry, but I'm saying hello. Your second name is Gabriel, so I will just say that name. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to see you. Mark Webster. What are your tips for cleaning, storing, and keeping life in your wash mitt? I know these already, but for others watching. Fantastic. So, everyone does ask me about wash mitts quite a lot. Uh, how do I get them to last longer? How do I do it? For me here, do not force dry your wash mitt. This is what we do at AM Details. We use the wash mitt. We then rinse it out. Every now and again, we drape it over the side of the bucket and rinse it down. <laughs> And then we leave it scrumpled up in the bottom of the wash bucket. It is that easy. We don't let it dry out. And the buckets never have a lid on it, so it's not as if we're suffocating it. Our buckets, the bottom bucket goes into the top bucket, and in the top bucket will just have the two wash mitts in it, because we have two guys cleaning here generally at a time. And that is where we leave them. And we're getting a solid three, four, five months out of our wash mitts, and we're using them a lot. I think when customers come in and see me, and they're like, oh, I only got three months from this, or I only got this, and you're maybe only doing weekend washes, it might be because they dry out. So I'm wondering if that's the big killer in your maintenance of wash mitts. Don't put them in the washing machine. You don't want to go anywhere where the fibers can get pulled out. These are living natural products, guys. Remember, they are going to degrade anyway. I had a customer in the other day who was um, saying, how do I make my mitt last longer? I got a year out of it. I was like, wow, you know, well done. You got a year out of a mitt, that is phenomenal. Or you can look at using synthetic mitts if uh, genuine landfill mitts are not exactly what you're looking for. Hope that helped you out, Mark. With that question, quick sup of coffee. Mm. How are we all doing, guys? This is incredible. Mm. I'm LK, SPB Autoshine. I can see the argument, but most coating companies claim their coatings are resistant to temperatures far above what wheels can create. Oh, you guys must have been having a great conversation in the chat. Let me go back. I've been looking at the whole genome. Uh, perfect. I'm LK. I would have thought it's down to the wheels producing heat affecting them. Ah, yeah. No, SPB, it's literally down to, as I said, uh, the time of applying a more complicated to apply coating. You get great benefits from Crystal Serum Black, but it is not the easiest coating in the world to apply. Thus, more time, more money, more potential risks to the wheel. So generally, most customers opt for G-Technic C5, and G-Technic just offer the simplicity that is G-Technic C5. If a customer here wants Crystal Serum Black, we charge more. Other G-Technic detailers may do it differently. And that is where you have to go and see your own, each individual G-Technic detailer on uh, how they want to apply things uh, to your car. But I hope that has helped you both out in the explanation of that. Give us a shout in the comments. I'll make my way down. Carl Harris. Harris. Hello, Carl. How are you doing? What do you recommend to stop brake discs rusting when washing? I don't really have a recommendation for that. I'm really sorry. But we have started doing the Jim White technique, if you can, of taking it for a little drive back and forth. We don't have much of an estate here, so it isn't really working out for us doing that here on the estate. So for us, every time we do a wheels off anyway, we just give them a very quick little rub over with wire wool and then wipe them down. But even using purified water isn't gonna help much because of the chemicals that are in your wheel cleaners is, is what's causing it. And then naturally having water there anyway, they're just gonna surface rust. So just remember, once you've washed your car, do a couple of brake checks when you drive away. But I know it's not great, because the first time you go away and apply the brakes, you get rust particles all over your wheels. It is a bugbear, but it is unfortunately life at the moment. <clears throat> James Smith, how do you determine if a coating has wore off or if the hydrophobic properties are just gone, but the coating is still there? Oh, good question. You could do some resistance test if you wanted, but I'm not really a big fan of going and scratching someone's car. So generally, we just work with, for example, if it's G-Technic, then we have our fixed times to go down. And then if we're noticing that the hydrophobicness is dropping back, the first thing to look into is, is the vehicle decontaminated? Because generally, if you're noticing your hydrophobic effect on a coating or a normally waxed car, is dropping off, especially a lot of people say, oh, the lowers, your wax is rubbish, the lowers is gone, gone. <laughs> is generally that's where your contamination is. So I always say to people, make sure you've done a thorough good decontamination of your coating or of your wax first, and then see if the hydrophobic properties have come back. 
because all that's happened is the water is sticking to the dirt and particles, particles that are attached to your paintwork and or coating. Um, and then we would top that off. Not entirely answering your question, James, but I hope that does help you live on the YouTube. Uh, East Duke Fife, how are we doing, Smith Automotive? It's great to see you from there. I'm not entirely sure of the delay here. You guys can see it coming up on the chat screen here. Bonjour from France. Hello, this is amazing. I love seeing all you guys. Ryan, if you don't have access to a dry undercover area, would you not bother with a coating in case it rains whilst letting it cure? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't. I, I know for a fact there are guys out there detailing, applying coatings in gardens, applying coatings uh, under gazebos, and that is perfect if that is the way you want to do business. And if the customer is happy with that and that's how you've sold it to the customer, fantastic. Not here. I wouldn't be applying coatings anyway unless we had the facility that we had here or at least had a garage or at least had coverage um just with trying to get the best out of the coating trying to get the most you can from it because remember these uh coating quoted guidelines or timelines are only as good as the person applying them or the situations in which they were applied under so it's another reason we don't do any forced drying here let the product dry naturally and always leave it 12 hours um we're just making do with the facilities we've got, but I wouldn't be doing it in a garden or even outside. We have the roller shutter down, sweep up, take every step that we can here to carry out that service for the customer. But that's an AM details thing. Uh, if you couldn't guarantee that car was gonna be dry, I would not be doing it. And I would try and look in to see if you can get somewhere. See if your local detailer will rent you some space in their unit, or if a local garage will rent you some space, come check it out. You know, We've got two bays here and not always our front bays open. So, you know, bit of money you can use the front bay as long as it wasn't hindering what we were working on in the rear bay. Hmm. It's incredible, guys. Okay, what else have we got going on today in the chat? I'm probably gonna be on for about another 10, 15 minutes, guys. So let's start some interaction here. I wanna know where you're all from. That would be incredible. I wanna know what you think of the five-step safe wash technique. Do you use the same at home? What techniques do you use at home? Let's get it all in this chat, because remember, people are gonna be able to watch this, read the chat, and they can continue this conversation when this goes, the replay goes live on YouTube and they'll be able to comment in the description down below and we can continue this conversation because that's what I want to get going. I want to build this community, build the community that is us all interacting about detailing. There is no right, there is no wrong answer. Let's just all see how we do it, what's going on. So, so cool. What mitt do you guys use at the shop? Does it depend on how dirty the car is? Uh, no, we have two types of mitt. Two? Two types of mitt at AM Details, and we only got them in due to personal preference. Some people don't like putting their hand inside the sheep's leather, um, so then we got the pad type. When you have the pad type, some people don't like how long the fibres are, and some people like being able to put their hand inside a mitt to use the thumb. I uh, don't do either. I use the thumb mitt, but I actually don't put my hand inside it, I just use it like a sponge. So I hold it like a sponge, and then I'm able to flip it and get another use of the met on the car before I go back to the bucket. So a little bit of time saving tip from me. Hope that answers your question. Awesome session, Alan, great questions, guys. Thank you very much, Doug. Great to see you guys checking in. Amazing seeing you here. I hope you are all well. Hi, Alan, what's the best way to avoid water spots, please? I have a dark car and when I rinse it off on a warm day, I really struggle to keep the water spots away. Yeah, so mm, nine, eight times out of 10, Nine or eight times out of 10, it's due to your actual water. So the water has contamination in it and that's coming from your supply source. You need to work out what your hardness rating or the contaminants that are in your water. And you would want to use something like a water purifier. Uh, we're currently testing the Pure Final Rinse Machine, but we've also got our more industrial machine, but we're really liking this Pure Final Rinse Machine. Get yourself a little water meter. I will link one down below in the description, guys, once this video goes back up on the replay, so you can go and check it out, and test your water. Anything from zero to 30 parts, you're pretty good and you won't get any water spot in. 30 plus, you may, and the moment you're starting to get near 50 to 100, up to 100 plus, your, your water most definitely is contaminated. And it doesn't matter how much you dry it, you're now leaving contaminants on your car and they're going to cause water spotting. But, you could use the best purified water in the world and not dry your car and still get water spots. So the reasoning, for example, if you live out on a farm 
and all that dust and stew is up in the air, it's going to go onto the car, it's going to stick to the water. The water will evaporate perfectly pure and clear, not leave any of its contaminants, but that ring of ring of dirt that sat on the water droplet is now going to sit on the car and that has the potential to then leave a water spot mark that wasn't created by water per se, but due to dirt or contaminants getting stuck in your water and then when the water dried out, purified, it left them contaminants. So I would say one or twice out of 10, that's the reason, but eight or nine times out of 10, it's due to the contaminants that are in the water and using a water purifier will help you out with that. Also when drying, you could force dry it, so you could blow dry it, use a towel dryer. And when doing them, you can either use a water spot remover or something like AM Detailer to help you top up the protection and get rid of the water faster before it has time to dry out with the contaminants. So I hope that helps you. Sir, I don't know how to pronounce that. C-H-U-E-R, there you go. I hope that helps you. And are you on the chat? Can we see you at the minute? Oh, yours is just gone, is it? Where are we on the chat? So if I go in here, I've got Mark Webster, hello sir. Okay, the next one above is James Smith. Sweet, I've always had the issue because I have coatings on almost all my cars in the Midwest of the US and on the winters are hard on them. I do iron and tar once a year. Yeah, you can iron and tar as much as you want on that coating, as much as you most regularly would, James. Do not be worried. And if at any point you are thinking, you know what, it's lost the hydrophobic effect, you can just top that up, the coating will still be there. Uh, but how do you do maintenance along the I've tried this and supposed to be dealing with all that cars. Uh, Carl Harris, I don't really want to buy a machine polisher. I don't mind the harder work. So can I get a good finish by hand with compound? Indeed you can. It's just going to take you a lot longer to break down that compound. And there'll be some compounds in the market you will have no chance breaking down by hand. But finishing polishes, some middle of the range polishes like, you know, Menzerna 2500, Menzerna 220. You can really work well with those products by hand. It's going to take you a bit of effort. I would suggest maybe doing more straight hand motions rather than doing the standard trying to work it in and work in small, tighter areas um, and try and keep it contaminant free as best you can. So do it indoors, keep your dust and residue control down, but you can still do a pretty good job by hand. It's just, it's going to take you longer. Rousey. Welcome to the chat, nice to see you. Do you have any recommendation recommendation for cleaning around badges? Yes, Rousey, step number five. <laughs> Using an APC or citrus cleaner and a brush, so such as the AM Details 1-inch detailing brush, and then spraying it in around the badges. If you're meaning once you're inside and you're noticing there's still dirty or there's polish residue on there, you can do a couple of tricks, such as using a toothpick to pick the dirt off and pick the polish off the side of the badges. Don't be touching your paintwork with that or you'll scratch a perfect line around your badge. And then you can use something like a cotton bud or a bit of cotton wool with a bit of your favorite glaze on there, like AM glaze, and polish up the paintwork around the badge by using that. As long as you're using something soft or like a bit of foam tip or the corner of a microfiber, you won't leave any marring and then you can buff and polish all that up and that'll be a better way of maintaining your badges. Okay, what else is going on in the chat here? Uh, hi Alan, the five step method is spot on. We'll definitely be doing this from now on, thanks. No worries Kyle, I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to hear your feedback on it. Make sure when you go and do it, you come back to this video and put in the comments below how you got on and we can all have a conversation about it and, um, and see how you got on with it, It'd be really, really cool. Or hit us up on one of our social medias, which are all again in the description down below and send us some pictures. We love getting pictures and mail from you guys, it's brilliant. We're starting to get some mail now, mail is epic. So there might be a mail time soon. So I know this seems really weird saying um, if you want to send me anything, but if you do want to send me anything, it's in the description down below and I will do a video opening it. Just make sure you mark it that it's for, to be opened live on video so that when we do this and then I show people on a video, uh, they get to you know be along with the journey as well. That'd be really, really cool. James Smith, is this where we're at? James Smith, there he is, James Smith. Whoop. Can you use Gion, Gion, Yon, Wallabon, however you pronounce it, uh, or Carbro water sport removers if you get water spots? Yes, of course. You can use water sport removers perfectly for removing water spots, exactly what they're designed for. It's a special chemical in it that helps to neutralize all the contaminants that were once there. Uh, Mikhail Peterson. I hope, uh, Mikhail Peterson. I hope I pronounced that right for you. Hello, Cape Town, South Africa. Amazing. 
I use the same techniques generally, but I also use foam for the two bucket method wash. Yeah, exactly, Mikhail. I had someone the other day saying that they like to use foam for the two bucket wash, which, um, as I pointed out, is perfect if you're using the same chemical in both. The only reason I don't do it here, or at least teach it in the five step safe wash technique, is because you guys at home might be using different chemicals, and for whatever reason, those two chemicals might make a reaction the one that comes from your bucket and the one that's in your shampoo or on your snow foam in your car when they meet together. So that is why I generally don't teach people to use snow foam as a lubricant when doing their wash session. David Rennie, hello from Aberdeen. Hello, sir, how are you? Craigie B, it's great to see you here. When you're just about to place an order, then this pops up. That's right. <laughs> I hope you're having a, a great time placing that order. The website has been a bit of a pain. I do apologize for that. If you have any problems, Craig, do get in touch. Um, and C-H-U-E-R, ding, not a problem. That's why we're here to answer your questions. Ryan Smiley, hi there. I live in an apartment, perfect. Any best tips to wash my car as scratch-free as possible with no access to a garden hose, only jet washes at a garage? Perfect, Ryan, I covered it a couple of minutes ago in case you missed it in the feed. In fact, if this is you just tuning into the feed, guys, how are you doing? My name is Alan and I'm from AM Details. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We bring you detailing and car care related content every week. Subscribe and make sure you smash that bell so you get a notification every time I go live, just like this, to answer your questions. And in this video, I've been doing a quick how-to at the start about what is the AM Details five-step safe wash technique how do we do it? And I talk you through the whole process. Soon there will be a demonstration in the future, but this is just a talk through step guide. And now we're doing the live Q&A session. We just had a great question from Ryan, who's asking how can he adopt the five step wash technique in a roundabout way, that's what his question is, it's about there. When he lives in an apartment and he only has access to a garage pressure washer. So in the ideal perfect world, you would have a pre-wash in your car and possibly if you want to have nice warm hands, take like two liters of water and your two buckets in your car. You can get like pop out buckets. You can get these tiny little buckets. They sit like a little bag and you pop them out. I would go put your one pound into the machine, use the pressure washer, do not use the brush. Thorough pressure wash session. Just like step one in the safe wash technique. Then adopt step number two, do an APC rinse. So just get the APC out of the boot of your car, spray it onto them areas. Or if you've got a pump action sprayer, spray it on there. Stick another pound in the machine and then use the generic pressure washer lance again to get rid of the APC. You're not going to be able to put any snow foam on there unless you want to carry around a pump action snow foam in your boot. Then you could put a snow foam on there, wait for it to do its thing. And then you could, if you want to, do step number five, which is the one inch detail and brush session at this point. Then put another pound in and rinse that down. Get your pop-up buckets out or get your normal buckets out and your warm water that you might have brought with you. Pop it in and then you can do a two bucket wash and rinse it down as well. Adopt whichever steps of that you want and as many of them as you can. You just have to be realistic. You have to be realistic, Ryan. How far do you want to go to do the safest wash that you can when using that? Preparation is key and you can always keep a little danger kit in the back of your car. So I always have an APC in the back of my car, a glass cleaner and a glass cloth for all situations and it'll cover all of that for you. There we go. <clears throat> quick drink, quick check of the time. Let me see what we've got here on the live stream. I'm gonna quickly dive into some live stream stats. I've been kind of letting this go a bit loose. So we have incredibly, incredibly guys, we have 56 people live with us right now. Hi guys, how y'all doing? This is amazing. And we have been streaming for nearly one hour, which is perfect. So I'm only gonna be around for about five more minutes, guys. I'm gonna quickly go through these questions that we can see, and then we'll see what happens. So up next is, uh, I'm LK. Harbor Freight DAs are so cheap, there's almost no reason to try and do paint creation by hand, Carl Harris. Oh, great, yeah, interacting, this is perfect. No, I'm from West Midlands, UK. Carl, how are you doing? West Midlands, UK, great to see you. Uh, James Smith, Ryan, can you try filling buckets and taking it to the jet wash and doing a two bucket washer there? Perfect, yes, exactly what I said. Rousey, thanks, no worries. Uh, <laughs> Miles Drive, I always use the five step wash. Also use two grit guards in both buckets. Lower guard to hold the grit, upper guard to wipe the mitt on. Credit to Larry Ammo. Exactly. And now grit guard have brought out the specifically angled one. So you can have the grit guard at the bottom, the angled one for scrubbing on. It's a great little tip, top tip from Ammo. One day, we might see Ammo in the chat in here. Who thinks that might happen one day? Hmm? Who knows? Uh, 
Mini Mad, great vids, Alan, keep up. Thank you so much, great to see you. Carl, any recommendations for exterior black plastic? Yes, decontaminate them. Everyone forgets to decontaminate them. Make sure you remove the tar, remove all chalk residue, etc. Then use AM Trim. It's a dedicated paint sealant, really easy to use. And if you get it on your paintwork, don't worry, you can just wipe it off. Really, really good uh, plastic and wrap protection. The only problem with it is it is, uh, it doesn't really like solvent, so if you're going to use something like a tar remover, it will remove it, but it'll be very easy to top up. And if you're using a tar remover, generally you're doing a decontamination stage anyway, so you're probably going to be topping up your plastic when you're doing it. Ryan Smiley, cheers Alan, really helpful. We'll check out the products on the website. Thank you. Make sure you put a little comment in there for Jamie that you went there because you've seen this live feed. He loves reading all your comments. Uh, Billy Fraser, thanks Alan for sharing some of your tips and tricks. We love it. And who is looking after Pepe, Alan? Oh, Sarah's looking after Peppy. Of course. Peps is at home. I'm at work at the minute. Look, still at AMD. All right, let's have a little look over here. Done. Let's have a look over here. So very quickly, to finish off this video, guys, the five-step safe wash technique. It is simple, simple steps. I don't want to complicate anything. Here we go. Step number one, pressure wash down your vehicle as much as you can before introducing any chemical. You will be surprised how much dirt you can get off. And that means the dirt that's left on there is stubborn stuff and when your chemical hits it it's going to work on that rather than working on the loose stuff that would come off easily. Step number two use an APC or citrus based cleaner like AM APC and clean them high impact areas you can get all them cleaned up get all them uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> get all them cleaned up I do apologize cleaned up as uh, far as possible using your wing mirrors uh, the front bumper or the whole vehicle give it a good APC rinse and then you can pressure wash that down as well. Step number three is then to use the snow foam. The reason we use this third after an APC is if you use the APC to cut through that initial bit then what must be left is super stubborn and now you can use the long dwelling time to use a detailing word of snow foam on that to start breaking that down rather than what most people do is just fling snow foam straight onto a dry car and it's got to go through that initial bit that we managed to rinse off another bit that we managed to use APC and then finally get to this bit. You're asking your snow foam to do a lot of work and we're doing the five step safe test safe wash technique here and we get paid to wash we want to do as many as we can after the snow foam you're then going to move on to your two bucket method it's time to make contact with the car we've done as much as we can contact us later so we're going to do the two bucket method uh, two buckets with grit guards and a mitt and the whole shebang and then step number five and the only reason i make it step number five is because it's not needed to be done all the time depending on your lifestyle and i like to do it at the end so i'm not like moving around dirt and stuff etc. So it is the one inch detailing brush and APC where you do that to clean up all your little intricate areas uh, on the vehicle like badges, grills and all them little bits and pieces. Now all I've got to do is do this, do this, uh, do something like